The female Synergy in Gotwick is actually a pretty misleading name in my opinion. In reality, it is a commander damage synergy. Everything found within is built towards increasing the effectiveness of your commander active castings, be it through increased damage, or repeating castings, or adding special effects to them such as disarms or reroot effects. The reason it's called the female synergy is that the primary enablers of the build in Layla and Salma interact directly with commander actives with their 4 star skills but they only do so with female commanders, so they in effect limit the commanders in which they are able to synergize with. You can see in their tooltips here, at the start of the battle, allied female commanders, so it's only females, and with Layla it's the same thing, when your female commanders use their active skills, blah blah blah. Layla is the core component of the build, with her 4 star ability causing actives to recast themselves, potentially multiple times, which can then reproc other 4 star abilities and lead to huge amounts of damage snowball. And you won't need other commanders to be a 4 star to benefit from this, so in terms of prioritization, if you're a low spender, getting Layla to 4 star first needs to be the first priority for a female build, and then you can work on other commanders up to 3 stars for maximum stats and then work on getting them up to 4 stars for their weak awakening abilities also. Something to be aware of though is that Layla's value will somewhat be tied to the stars of her surrounding female commanders because of the active cooldown reduction found through awakening. So 0 and 1 star commanders will use their actives 2 times throughout a fight, 2 and 3 star commanders will use their actives 3 times throughout a fight, and a 4 star commander will use their active by default, four times throughout a fight. And obviously, the more actives that cast, the more chances there are for Layla to reproc their actives. Salma is often considered the secondary enabler of the build, but as you would know if you've watched my video on her previously, she doesn't actually cause more active castings for any four star commander in the game except four star Daenerys. So while she will give you greater damage snowball by causing the actives to hit earlier, and then get multi procs by Layla earlier also, which there is huge value in due to damage snowball where you will fight into fewer troops across the fight and that will cause you to receive less damage on you yourself and therefore you'll deal more damage yourself because there's less troops killing your troops. So your damage numbers will stay at a higher level for a longer period of time. But Layla is very much the star of the show in the female build. When you do the maths on her, and average out uh, these numbers. At base, on a female commander, she will cause each individual act of casting to go from one times value to the average value of 1.59 actives per casting. So across a fight with a four star female commander, uh, a female commander will on average use six actives as opposed to the normal four. And that is the fundamental part of this build is getting more damage out of commander actives. This effect can be exaggerated further now with her weapon. When you unlock her weapon, that average value of active castings per female commander will go from 1.59 to 1.69, and then it will scale up uh, through to the nearest decimal at least to 1.79 actives on average per casting at 1 star, 1.91 times at 2 star, 2 times at 3 star, and 2.09 times at 4 stars on the weapon. Past Layla and Salma, you have a few multi-purpose female commanders you can run alongside them, as you see on the second row here. So you have Annie, who was one of the earliest awakenings, and I feel like has built up a bit of a false reputation for being better than she really is because of how popular she was in those early days in my opinion. I think her ability has been heavily power creeped by newer releases when you actually test her in practice. She also suffered from the combat system change at some point in 2021 also. If her spear health isn't getting large amounts of value, she's actually quite a low value option in my opinion. If you do get her weapon leveled high up at least. If I can find it here, where she total stats, 
So when it's at higher levels or maxed out, uh, this will synergize very, very well with the 1000 BD setups with uh, disarm effects through Cersei and Danny, and then the multiple castings will help synergize with Sinel. So Annie with weapon might be in those full whale female builds at this point, and she will of course have value in mid spender female builds too, but I don't think she is as good as a lot of people perceive her to be honestly. Arya is also very good by default. Her, she's free to play to, uh, to awaken of course, and she can ramp up to do insane amounts of damage wow. with her 4 star ability when she's proc through Layla multiple times. And her weapon is also very synergistic with the core elements of the build. If you see here, uh, if a target is inflicted with the disarm status, you'll get a reroot effect. So again, this will work very, very well with uh, Marjorie, Daenerys, or Cersei, since they have disarm effects. And of course, the more times you can get her active to cast in a shorter period of time, the more you can exploit her damage uh, multiplier and snowball more and more damage earlier in the fight. I mentioned disarm mechanics there and Marjorie. So Marjorie will be the cheapest option into uh, getting a disarm mechanic into a female build and that sounds good in practice but for the cost especially she is the most expensive epic commander to awaken because of how buying her medals directly for rarity works. I'm not really a fan of Marjorie in her current state, honestly. She will bring good passive stats when fully awakened, but when you actually think through her 4-star ability, so it says here, you, uh, after casting skills, there's a 50% chance to inflict disarmed on one lineup of a random enemy male commander. So she can only disarm males. So let's actually think about that. That means she can't disarm anything here, anything in the female lineup at all. She basically can't disarm anything in the weakness lineup because weakness attacks bypass disarm mechanics because disarms only disarm or only affect normal attacks and weakness attacks do not come under that criteria. So she can have a few seconds here and there but like if Hector hits at the first second on Salma and then they have say Drake with weapon healing as of 11 seconds there is a very very short period from like so like 6 to 10 seconds to actually possibly get any value out of your disarm there at all and then even with bleed which female counters in a sense because of the dis disarm mechanics uh, the core commanders for bleed are female so <laughs> you can't disarm them so Sonara and Rhea are female, so they can't be disarmed by Marjorie. The whale builds can be hit hard with Jon, Sand, or Daeron and the Night King. That is true. But mid-spender bleed builds will have Andrea and Lats in them. So they also can't be uh, disarmed at all. So it'll be like four-fifths of a mid-spender bleed build that can't actually be hit by Marjorie which is really bad. Obviously the whale lineups, if you hit disarms on them, is very good, but that is a very, very small niche for such an expensive commander, when you could potentially get more guaranteed value with other options. Then of course you have the free 1000 BD commanders, uh, who will all belong in a fully maximized female composition. Of course they all synergize so well together uh, with this lineup shown at the top here. Most of the alternative commanders seen in these other rows uh, gain very little benefit from Salma, except her damage snowball that I mentioned. But Sunel, she really uh, synergizes well with the snowballing of actives. Like the more actives you can cast early, the more you can gain benefit from her increased skill damage on all the other female commanders. And of course, this only affecting female commanders as well really incentivizes even further only running females. Daenerys uh, is the only commander in the game who Sama will bring an additional active out of because of her reduced active cooldown. 
so she synergizes really well with Selma. And then Cersei has effectively the highest for uh, highest damaging four star of the build. So Wildfire is so good that snowballing actives with that in your build will just gain exponentially more value than any other four star abilities available to you in this build. Especially when you're hitting into multiple lines, which is pretty much always the case in the likes of PvP rallies onto cities or an AC, uh, Cersei will be so great. So the more actives you can get out early, the more you can exaggerate that, that damage snowball effect that Salma has. But past this point, I think is where the female lineup really starts to have some problems in the current state of the game, in my opinion. If you can afford at least Daenerys and Cersei, which is a bit of a ridiculous thing to say, at least, uh, your female build will be good to go, of course, but there are some real issues with making a competitive female lineup compared to the other synergy types, at least, at lower pay brackets. The power curve for female is very, very harsh, in my opinion. It starts at a very weak point and then spikes really hard when these premium commanders get involved. It spikes a lot harder than weakness builds do, for example. So... Baelish, whilst good, is one of the worst 1000 BD commanders, probably the worst actually. Uh, Night King is listed here, but he's not synergistic of weakness at all, he's just like raw value. So th these commanders don't spike the build as hard as these do, especially because the alternatives, like you can run triple weakness with a Patello or a Hector, and have three lines stacking weakness onto something, and you can really, really ramp your damage up to very high levels through that. Whereas female is much more reliant on these premium four-star abilities. So for the, the majority of people watching this video, I imagine, if you're trying to build female, you have real issues in being truly competitive in the mid-spender bracket, because past Layla, uh, all the options past her aren't too amazing for one reason or another. Salma doesn't actually increase the amount of actives that get cast by commanders. And then past that, there aren't that amazing of four-star abilities on active castings that you can really exploit her snowball effect with. So Annie and Arya have some decent damage effects attached to their active, but it's, it's really not that crazy. Maybe when you have a high-stacked or high-level Aria weapon, it starts to get a bit crazy, but whilst that is free to play accessible in theory, in reality, uh, you need to spend a lot of money to be consistently getting needles to, to level that up to, until it gets to that point. None of these options are just going to have the effect that Cersei has on the build, basically, in terms of active damage. So after this point, when you're looking at your options, you have the free female. 30% uh, stack commanders, who may be good as a fifth commander for a female lineup when at four stars, just because of the brute stats of them. Especially because, as I will touch on a bit later, you will want to be running mono formations wherever possible when using commander damage compositions. And there is a bit of an imbalance of infantry commanders when you look down here, which is a bit of a problem realistically, because whilst you can run female imp. Salma gives no infantry stats at all. She only gives toe health, cavalry attack, spearman attack. So like I said with her not giving additional active castings, without these big commanders to exploit their 4 star abilities with, she is realistically absolutely terrible for mono inf builds, in my testing at least. So because of this, and just the general lack of really solid options past Layla, uh, the best way to build female for mid-spenders, in my opinion, is actually hybriding in weakness alongside her. So if I go to the formation screen to show this, you will have your core of Layla and Selma, that's fine. And then you can have, say, Arya. You can throw in Annie, and then you can then throw in something else. What, what, what are the options? Let's say... Let's imagine we're running mono cav and lane is four star or three star or something. So this will synergize together, 
But like I mentioned, Lena doesn't she doesn't have synergy with this build overly. Like on her four star, she's just raw stats. Annie isn't you're not getting value out of the spear health. Arya, you're not getting value out of the imp defense. Neither of them have that great abilities. So what you could do in these final slots is run Jamie and then Enzo. And let's say he's four star for this. And hybrid weakness in. So these two synergies are the only two that you can actually blend together in the game, given that Sonara will block both weakness attacks and commander actives, so nothing can be blended or bleed at all. But at this mid spender bracket, your options are just so limited, and you can really get the best of both worlds when blending these two together. So you get Layla, who has three female commanders to multi proc their actives of or four potentially, if you're running lats as the enabler for, for him. But then, with just one healing enabler for Jamie, as lats, Enzo, or Drake, you will get at minimum 65% of the fight with weakness attacks triggered on all your lineups through the one healer, or potentially 72.5% of the fight if you have the respective healer's weapon which cuts 3 seconds off the defense stacking part of their 4 star and gets into the healing earlier. But you also have to remember that whilst the Layla and Salma won't be able to multi-proc or snowball the actives earlier, they will still cast their actives. It's not like Sonara is involved and nothing can use their actives. They will still cast their actives 4 times throughout the fight. So because of this, they'll still benefit from things like dragon skills with follow-up or strong assault, uh, the castle skins that increase commander damage and stuff like that. Because none of those things actually interact with Layla or Salma or female commanders at all. They only interact with commander damage. So whilst you won't get the full effect of those buffs, because they aren't being exaggerated by having Layla and Salma interact uh, with them also, you will still get the value out of them, and then the value you'll get out of the weakness damage that this is providing to your lineup will vastly outscale any of the other alternatives at the, at the mid-spender level, in my opinion. This will also give you a nice curve to your damage throughout the fight. So, say you're running Mono Cav with this, you'll have the free actives casting early, Sama will cast at one second, you'll start ramping up Arya's... Uh, stacking active damage. Maybe Layla will reproc it once or twice. So you'll have that first 10 seconds of burst damage, but then in the back half of the fight, Enzo will be healing every lineup, and that means they'll all be doing weakness attacks, and then this will backload your damage and keep a, a nice strong curve to your damage throughout the fight, which will keep you performing well in practice. And as I do keep mentioning, whilst the build is called female by, by most people, including myself in the title of this video ironically, uh, this isn't a female build, it is a commander damage build. And you can still get the benefit of commander damage buffs when hybriding and weakness into 40% of this setup. And I've, I've seen in my own alliance people struggle with this a bit when I've suggested it to them actually. Because people have it so fixed in their mind that it's a female build. But it's not the case, it's a commander damage build, and the goal overall is to perform the best as possible in combat, and you can just reach that point better through hybriding in weakness at the mid-spender bracket, because those weakness commanders can still benefit to such a large degree from those buffs, but they'll just bring such high value through, through the weakness attacks themselves. So if we look at upgrade priorities in terms of commanders, so you really have to split them by if you have access to the 1000 BD commanders or not. So let's say upgrade priorities priorities with 1000 BD commanders. In my opinion, it will be, it'll be Layla first. And it'll be Cersei because her 4 star just increases the damage of active castings by such a ridiculous degree. And then it will be Dany and then Sanel and then Salma. If you can't afford Salma, I'll put Arya here. Uh, with the weapon. Uh, with weapon, if no, Sunel. Because of disarm synergy. 
Again, this could be potentially Annie with weapon also. I guess I could list the Annie slash Arya. Sunel in a vacuum would probably contribute more to this lineup than Daenerys would, I think, but you need everything else set up to such a high degree to get maximum value out of her. Like, if you don't have everything at uh, such a high level already, like Layla weapon, uh, potentially Annie weapon to uh, snowball her faster, Salma weapon is now in the game also, and that will also cause more active casts if you have it fully leveled. I don't think it will change the mechanic where you'll have the 40 second actives casting. So it will bring more active castings, but it's the, di the interaction that causes it to only have four by default will still exist, if that makes sense. You'll have an extra one through the mechanic of the weapon, but Salma's mechanic ex itself will still only have four default active castings. And then, but none of this really matters to, to most of us, I imagine. If you are hybriding in weakness consistently, maybe flexing to weakness, like you're running mono spear as, a, as an off build a fair bit, maybe getting Daenerys first before Cersei is better because Cersei will really need Layla with her to, to get full value. But let's say upgrade priorities without 1000 BD commanders for Cav spear, because I, I really think you have to split these. So Layla will consistently be first for all of these. Uh, Sam will be next because she's getting such high value from the, the passive stats because it's Cav or Spear. And then it will be Arya or Annie. Uh, and then Enzo or Drake, depending on which build you're running. And then uh, Jamie, of course. So if you're Spear, you run Annie and, en uh, Annie and Drake, I think. Annie, you get the value of the Spear health for. And that will give you more more value. For Cav, I like Arya there because you will say you're running mono Cav, of course. And your counter will be spear, obviously. Arya will be inf, so you'll do infantry active damage on her, and she'll do significantly more active damage than other commanders because of how a four star effect works. So this, she will effectively act indirectly as anti counter for you. And if you've watched my video on weapon rerolling, you'll see how highly I rate anti-counter. If you can mitigate your main weakness, that goes a long way in, in combat nowadays. So Arya will really help you when fighting a, a, against spears, and she's just of a, approximately equal value with weapon to Annie with weapon also. And then the, the rest is pretty self-explanatory. But then for infantry, I really, really uh, feel passionately about cutting Selma from infantry female builds. When I've tested it, it's, it's just such a, a stark difference when you cut Selma. Um, so this will be Layla, and then I'll put Arya there, and then it will have to be Lats. She's female, which synergizes with Layla, which helps with her being Jamie's enabler, so you will get more active damage through that. And then in this last slot, it's it's fairly fluid. You can run Andrea, you can run Haley, who actually tests very well for female imp. Actually, her, her skill is not as bad as its reputation has would have you believe, in my opinion. But also, freestyle Rhea is a good option here. Also, she does silence herself at four star, but three star. That mechanic doesn't exist, and you can really make the most out of her uh, 90 plus percent infantry attack, of course, which you can then roll into the weakness attack scaling to multiply it further. You can roll it into the commander actives to multiply them further, and that will bring a lot of value. So, this last spot is a bit of a debate, but for the bulk of the builds, I think these are what you're going to want to be to be going with. Now a core concept that has to be understood by players using this synergy and really isn't to the degree it should be in my opinion is how commander damage is reduced when you run multiple lines in a fight. This is possibly the most important thing to know when running this formation since it's such a core source of your damage. 
the general concept, let's say you're running monoenv. So let go down there. Monoenv. Four star commanders. Uh, I'll specify this above. Four star commanders. It was 206% active scaling by default. That will be scaled up for like strong assault or the, or the car, uh, casino castle skins that give plus thirty percent, but it's that at, at base. So mono imp, your active damage will be calculated through this formula. It'll be two hundred six percent as a multiplier on the total attack stats of your of your infantry. Pretty simple. Pretty clearly how how it should work, how it does work. If you're running Inf Cav though, for example, it will be 260% of your total attack stats of your infantry, plus 260% times the total attack stats of your cavalry, then divided by 2. So in practice, you can pretty much envision this as two lines reducing your active damage by half. Three lines reducing your active damage to about 33%, and four lines reducing your active damage to about 25%. You can linger on the math if you want, but the general thing to understand and remember is that you will deal significantly more commander damage if you only attack with one troop type in a fight. And because of this, you're really going to want to put yourself in positions where possible uh, in, into sending mono. So flexibility is good, of course, but it will perform better if you predict what the flexibility is required for and swap to mono to counter what you're expecting to be countered by, rather than hedging your bets, if you get what I mean. I know, it's slightly confusing. So say you send infantry at something, say you're on the supermine, you send inf, uh, they hit inf into you as well, so it's an inf mirror and you win. And you're expecting them to come back at you, so you know your inf, they know your inf, you're expecting them to send cav at you. What you could do is hedge your bets and set up an inf spear, so like maybe infantry is still your best stats, so you, you want to stick with infantry, but then you want the spears at the back to, to counter the cav if they send that. But that would dilute your commander damage by half if you do that. And that's such a core part of this build that you're then really uh, mitigating if you actually do that. So what you could do instead is just recall and resend uh, mono spear instead if you're really expecting that cav. And you'll perform a lot better in a vacuum at least because you'll do more, co more commander damage with, with that composition. Obviously, it's not always that simple, but just as a general thought process and concept, that is how the commander damage build will perform at its very best. Luckily for female, it can be very, very flexible with the aforementioned setup here uh, because of how Jamie's enablers can just be swapped at will. So you have Lats, you have Drake, and you have Enzo. So you can just swap this in and out, and everything else is pretty interchangeable. So you can run this with any of the free troop types. If you're approaching this from a free-to-play perspective, uh, this is obviously very difficult. It's quite a high buy-in to be able to run this. Aria is the only free-to-play option. But unfortunately, I think just for free-to-play players, Synergy doesn't really exist because you need these enablers. Like Layla, Sonara, or Jamie are mandatory for Synergy to work. And they're, of course, paid commanders. You need to get gold and then get the epic tokens to get them to four star to, to function properly. So it's very hard to make any of this stuff work with a totally free-to-play account, honestly. And your priorities there are just going to want to be raw stats and just raw value from effects and just get as much as possible and, and see how far that can take you. Another thing to keep in mind also with this commander damage interaction uh, in something like AC, where you're pretty much forced into mixed formations through situational factors, so say you're an infantry main, but you've then got to send cavalry on the back line for the rally speed, so you're forced into two lines, or say you're holding a building and people are just sending you whatever troops they have to reinforce you, and that forces you into multiple lines, unless you have 
the 1000 BD uh, commanders with this build, you're really going to struggle to keep up with alternative mid spender builds in something like AC. Uh, because something like weakness not only mitigates uh, the loss of commander damage through multiple lines because of its strengths are just elsewhere. Like it's, the bulk of its damage doesn't come from commander damage, so it doesn't hit it as bad as it hits female. But it can actually even make those multiple lines into a strength if you run um, a triple weakness composition with uh, Lats, Drake, Enzo, and Jamie together. So you can triple stack weakness on all three lines and then those diluted lines actually become a positive for the formation when it's a massive negative for female and that is something you're really going to have to uh, want to be aware of because if you have the flexibility to change out of female even just for AC or something I'd really advise doing that I'd really try and avoid running female lineups in AC where possible unless you just have no other options or of course the the 1000 BD commanders because they will make such a big difference and they will actually perform quite well in those situations because something like Cersei will hit all lines uh, Daenerys's dragon will hit all lines so they will work quite well in those situations where uh, the situational factors force it into, into multiple line fights if you are playing my alliance in AC though, uh, please feel free to tell everyone in your alliance to, to play mid spender female builds. That would be much appreciated. Thank you. But now all of this is understood. You know what commanders you need. You know roughly how to prioritize upgrading them. Uh, you know how to set up and why exactly in terms of the, the monotype stuff. It's just about how to maximize things as, as much as possible really I guess. So you have dragon skills that can exaggerate commander damage. You have follow up and strong assault as the synergistic skills for this build. So follow up will cause dragon attacks off a chance from uh, when active skills from your commanders are cast and then strong assault will just directly increase the damage that active skills do. With this hybrid build specifically as well, you can run tear, and that will be very good, especially because you can then double dip into tear and follow up synergy with assist, which is very, very effective in this build actually. But in terms of rough priorities, I don't think any of the synergy stuff is better than reinforcement or reroute. They're still the best dragon skills, they just provide way too much raw value. If you're a rally leader for your alliance, rally size will be uh, in that top three as well. It's just too much size to, to give up. But after that point, I think in this build, it will be follow up and then tear. And then when you have them, you're probably going to want assist because it just works so well together. But then it will be a, a, a sort after that. That's probably how I'd look at ordering my purchases of them at least. Um, then you'll have the casino castle skins that increase commander damage of course. There's two of them now. Where are they? So elusive. So you have this and this. This is whilst good, it all it will actually do is change this from 260% to 290%, which whilst good, it won't have that crazy of an effect. It will make a big difference when you you have everything else already set up, but compared to when you could just run Sunken or something, if you already have that, uh, it might not be the biggest priority to upgrade to one of the casino skins as, a, as an alternative. And it will obviously lock you into female specifically as a synergy, which you might not totally want long term if you're in this pay bracket um, buying casino castle skins realistically. This will probably just be the cherry on top. I really wouldn't seek out rushing this over other options in terms of premium things you can, you can buy honestly. 
And that's pretty much everything that can min-max the, the female build, I think. For mid-spenders, at least. I could honestly go into much, much greater detail into uh, Daenerys, Cersei, and Sunel. But I don't think there's really much of a need to, because they're just obviously so much better than everything else available, so there just isn't really any thought processes required, if you know what I mean. If you can afford it, you run it. That's, that's the end of that discussion, really. Uh, I guess when you have your build set up, you're going to want to be aware of the female synergy's position in regards to how it interacts with other synergy types. So as a general concept, female will counter bleed, bleed will counter weakness, and weakness will counter female builds. So as a female player, you go, you are set up to counter bleed. This is, however, mostly a high budget interaction because it's primarily due to the, the disarm mechanics from the premium commanders. So you'll have Danny, you'll have Cersei, and you'll have Marjorie, who, I, as I mentioned earlier, I don't think is very good. The more pressing concern for most mid-spenders, I believe, is being aware of how weakness counters female. And this comes through several different things. So first is the high budget stuff. Uh, like with female itself and its disarms, Baelish is the weakness synergies 1000 BD commander. And he has an effect here that causes your actives to like reflect on yourself effectively. So he takes your primary strength and then uses it against you as both a damage form and damage reduction because you both won't be doing damage to the enemy with the reversed active, but you'll also be doing damage upon yourself. So it's quite a significant swing effect when this does happen. And then weakness has its own uh, casino castle skin. Or is it here? Which has a silence effect on it. So the first weakness attack they get will trigger silence on one of your commanders and stops active castings for realistically two sequences of them. Which can be quite a big loss of damage of course. But I think the most important interaction to be aware of is how Hector will in effect counter Solma. So you find Hector here. If you proc Solma into Hector at one second, he'll obviously he'll heal the damage back up. So he'll reduce the damage snowball effect of Solma, which is her main benefit. But it's also really significant from weakness's perspective for weakness damage because it will trigger healing on all lineups or pretty much all lineups before Drake, Enzo or Lat starts to heal even if they have their weapon so Salma proccing into a Hector weakness build will indirectly actually be increasing the damage of that player running weakness into you because you're allowing them to proc weakness attacks in the dead zone where they normally don't have weakness attacks so you're sort of indirectly causing more damage to be done onto you. And I think that this Salma Hector interaction is probably the one to, to mostly be aware of for most of you watching this video. Uh, speaking of Salma, her weapon has just been added into the game also. It will remove the RNG element of casting at one second. So it will start the damage snowball better. But it will, it will also uh, guarantee another recast, which you can then like multiply into more Layla procs and stuff like that. So the high budget female builds will really benefit from this, especially with Sunel Snowball in the mix. Because this will be what? Five more castings if you hit like a, a buffer line of troops in something like Ultimate Tournament, which, which will be very uh, influential indeed. But that information won't be useful to most of us whatsoever, and we will have to stick to the more uh, modest components of the female build. So you can run female with any unit type, but I would make sure to try and stick to mono formations where possible. If you run mono inf, I would cut Salma unless you have the 1000 BD commanders. Uh, without them, and at mid spender levels, I would really try and make sure to hybrid in weakness where possible and remember through that that it is a commander damage build and not necessarily a female build.